teriyaki beef that looks this good should be legal. Do you want to learn how to make authentic tasting teriyaki and sesame beef skewers? I'm going to show you five easy steps how to recreate these in your barbecue. So just sit back, grab a drink or two and let's get into it. Beef! It will be needed if we're planning on making teriyaki sesame beef skewers. I think we all know this is going to require gloves. Don't forget the snap. It makes you look professional. Luckily, I dropped in the Gippsland Premium Meats and picked up some beef for this cook. Mick, my butcher and cattle buddy, recommended this porterhouse steak just to try and keep the dish authentic. Step one is how to prep the beef. So angling a knife on a 45 degree angle, we're just going to cut across the steaks, slicing it into strips that are roughly five millimeters thick. And this will give you a more tender chopping experience when cooked. And then place the beef strips into a sealable container. Step two is making the teriyaki sesame sauce. Easy enough to do. Just grab yourself a receptacle that can hold liquid and add all of those ingredients into it and mix it up. Pour the teriyaki sauce over the beef, add the lid and shake it up until all the beef is covered. Step three is how long are we gonna let that beef soak up the sauce? Pop it in the fridge for at least an hour. Or if you don't have a lot of time, just leave it in there for 60 minutes. Did you know the word teriyaki translates to English to yummy food, shove it in my mouth. The meat's had a long enough time in its teriyaki bath. So we can now make up the skewers. I'm using these metal skewers, but if you only have wooden ones, Stop being so tight and buy some metal ones. These are easy enough to make. I tend to grab a piece of marinated beef and fold it on the skewer like so. And just make sure the skewers are all roughly the same size. That way they'll cook evenly. And then I just like to pour the leftover marinade all over them. Step four is setting up your barbecue correctly. And today I'm using my hibachi style rectangular shaped charcoal burning apparatus and I'm pairing it up with my 100 mil riser just to keep the beef a little higher off the charcoal than I normally would. Because I want good airflow, I'll make sure the bottom vents are fully open. Then I'll fill a chimney starter three quarters full with lump charcoal, light it up. Once it's fully ashed over, I'll dump that in. Then using an old pair of tongs, I'll just spread it out so it gives off even heat. I'll then add this cooling rack that resembles an Apache grill. Did you notice when I mentioned the type of barbecue I was using, I looked very happy. That was because of beer. Beer did that. What are we waiting for? Get the skewers over the heat straight away. Now this is gonna create some smoke due to the oil in the marinade. And we're just gonna give each side about two minutes before turning them over. By using that 100 mil riser, we don't have to turn the skewers as often as if they were down low on that heat. We do want these to char up. We don't wanna burn them though. Charring means flavor. Burnt means you can't cook and you should step away from the barbecue. It's now time to turn over the skewers. And look at that glorious color. If you aren't salivating by now, you must be a vegetable munching vegan. Not that I don't like vegans. I think you are super individuals who don't push your lifestyle on us meat eaters. Today I'm grilling with a medium to high direct heat. And all up, these skewers are only gonna take about 10 minutes to be perfectly cooked. Or for those of you who love to use my beer timer, you're looking at a one beer cook. Cheers. Step five is understanding the char factor. This is known as the Maillard reaction. It's a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars. And it's what gives brown food its distinctive flavor. And once we've got the skewers looking as good as this, it's time to get them off the grill and into our mouths. Mm. 